All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from sunny San Diego. And today I am joined by the original weird girl, Shelly Brown, who is over in Baltimore, Maryland. How are you doing, Shelly? Hey, John. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, now I'm excited to talk. What we're going to talk about today is individuality in the context of work. And uh, Shelley has released a book just actually just in June. I, I, I would uh, encourage you to check it out. And it's called Weird Girl Adventures from A to Z. It's not a label. It's a lifestyle. So first <laughs> of all, um, when we uh, before we jump into everything, just just give give me kind of the genesis of the book and, and you know, why you wrote it. And it's such a fascinating topic and, and it's a fascinating approach that you have, but just tell me how all of this came about in the first place. Oh gosh. Okay. So really the book was birthed um, probably 10 years ago. I started writing essays after I had been an ultra marathoner. My vertebrae collapsed on the nerves going down my leg. I had run like 26 marathon, six ultras. I was a national sales manager for a company and it was like my life bucket and my identity got up got turned upside down. And I sort of had to figure out who I was without the external defining me, without my job, without being an ultra marathon or stuff like that. And I started writing these essays and realized that, you know, just, just this sort of fitting in, not belonging, it has a lot to do with, with how we look at the world and how we identify ourselves. And so that is how the book came to be as I just started writing these essays. So when we talk about uh, when we talk about individuality in the context of work, so let's face it, I mean, we like a certain amount of individuality, but we also like a certain amount of almost things that we're familiar with, if you like, you know, when we hire people or when we build teams, you know, we want a certain amount of individuality, but we also want a certain amount, a quite a lot of familiarity because we know how to deal with particular types of people. And when somebody's maybe much further outside of that, it's outside our comfort zone. Yes, that's so true because we really do have, you know, this, this idea of what we want people to look like. Right. And so we look at individuals as something that separates us when individuality is really what unites us. And I think when we look at people as a certain avatar, we only want a certain type of avatar because that's the only thing that's going to fit in. We're missing out on a lot of different types of people who can be innovative, divergent thinkers and bring different things to the party. So individuality is really such an extraordinary thing to bring us together. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I know I agree, but I, but I think there is a certain amount of pressure on people or people feel a certain amount of pressure when they go to work is to, to, Adapt a, adapt a persona, the right, you know, your work persona, this is my work persona. And it may not be your authentic self. Uh, and, and you may not feel comfortable about expressing your authentic self. So how can, how can companies and people help bring out individuality and channel it in the right way? <laughs> I, you make me think of the first thing that I, that I always think of. It's not everybody likes pizza. And what I mean by that is there's individual preferences, there's individual points of view, and there's different personalities. And we can't cater to everybody specifically mm -hmm. like a restaurant and having a menu where everybody can pick their own thing. But I think it's really, really important for leaders to really understand that type of avatar, that type of different individual, how they can work best and not expect everybody to fit into that box. And on the individual level, I think it's really important for individuals to take their own agency in, in showing up more as themselves because that's what's going to make them perform at their best, feel at their best. So I think individuals have a responsibility for it, but also leaders have a responsibility. And I use WEIRD as an acronym, not yeah. let your freak flag fly, but welcoming, engaging, integrating, risk-taking and dynamic. So I've taken this weird concept and it's an acronym for action, 
that we can put into place to help do those things and to help bring individuals into, into the collective us. It's not let your freak flag fly and let everybody do their own thing, but really allowing for preferences and welcoming different points of view. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and I do think it, it is, I mean, there is the onus on, on both sides because obviously uh, you're, you, if you want to bring your individuality into play, I mean, you have to do it in a way that, as you said, you know, is collaborative, is, is engaging, all of these things, you know, as opposed to, you know, just say, well, I'm an individual and this is how I do things. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so when you work at, so how do you help, how do you help or uh, what advice do you have for uh, creating a, a more of a, an environment where people can be more individual, but at the same time, also that they can coalesce around the goal of the group and not become about just everybody being individuals? Well, that's such a great question. And before the pandemic, I was traveling around doing mindfulness educating. And mm -hmm. I'm not talking woo-woo. I'm not talking sitting on a lotus flower and that kind of thing. I actually used rock music to help people understand what mindfulness is. And it's really, really the foundation of self-awareness and how mm -hmm. we can show up better together. So I think that the biggest way that we can help people be more of themselves is if we become more self-aware and we step into being mindfully present and mindfully listen so that we can see very clearly what other people need. But I think when we can do that and we can take that self-awareness of how we're showing up, it can help us be more aligned with the common goal. Yeah, and it's interesting. I'm, I'm glad you brought up self-awareness because I do honestly think that self-awareness is the biggest obstacle to most people having a successful and happy life because it, you know, to become self-aware requires a little bit of work. And then it puts the world in a, in a lot more context for, for you. And, you know, you can, you can avoid, you can avoid a lot of missteps, but it's a really difficult thing. And we live in a society or in a culture today where reflection and self-reflection, actually taking time out to be with yourself is almost frowned upon. It's so true. And self-awareness, I think part of the reason that it's so hard is because people don't know what it is. Like when you say to people, what self-awareness, a lot of times they'll be like, well, it's knowing what other people think of how I am. And I'm like, that's not self, you know, <laughs> and, and being able to practice it really does require a, the awareness piece and the awareness is how am I being right now? You know, what am I, how am I showing up in this moment and, you know, am I completely distracted? Am I thinking about the forecast? And am I thinking about the month end? Am I sending people an email on a Monday morning instead of saying good morning, saying what happened with that lost piece of business? I mean, mm -hmm. that's the stuff that that really, really makes people feel like they don't belong as human beings when we're not self-aware enough to be realized that we are all very human people. And we treat people like they're a cog in a wheel that are supposed to perform for us. And we don't even take the time out to get to know anything about another human being. And we just make them a data, a metric and a KPI. And mm -hmm. I think with, with self-awareness, we get to understand about being more human. And I have a itchy scratchy feeling about all the heart-centered leadership because it's kind of like, I don't want to be all emotional and feely and touchy, but I also don't want to be the far extreme and make everybody a measurement. So the self-awareness piece and, and realizing that we're a human being too, I think is the happy medium between the circle of Kumbaya and the KPI dashboard. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. And the, I, I do think sometimes it goes, the pendulum swings too far to one extreme or the other. And I agree with you in the middle. Uh, so in the context of sales, right, individuality, that's a huge bonus if you can make it, if you can make it work for you. Because let's face it, I mean, most people, buyers or prospects, they start off 
kind of very reserved or defensive and when they and they think that they know what to expect from a salesperson right so if you are to inject some of your own individuality into it um you're going to stand out and you're probably going to put somebody at ease as long as obviously it's a positive <laughs> it's a positive trait of your individuality yeah. yes a hundred percent a hundred percent you know and and because we all know that when we are ourselves that is what attracts people to us. And so in a sales role, that is exactly how we can build that relationship to actually become a business relationship. You know, that's how we can carry that prospect along to become a buyer because they're going to buy from us. They're going to buy because they like us, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but the other thing is in sales teams, individuality is really important because some people are not the biggest collaborators and we're individual contributors, mm -hmm. but there's also people that do want to feel that culture alignment with their other team members. So it's, it's both and like we're individual, but we're also a collective who are trying to move forward and, and reach a goal. So how do leaders not pit people against each other and create create an actual team feeling as well. I think it's yeah, really important. Absolutely. And I think part of that is, uh, uh, is to understand how you can take the different individuals and the individuality of the different people and apply it to maybe parts of the problem. So when you bring it all together, you have a great team solution because you have people looking at issues or problems from different angles and perspectives. Exactly, exactly. And that takes Again, that self-awareness to be a mindful leader, to listen, to be present, and to invite people's points of view, and to make sure that people aren't hijacking the conversation so that, mm -hmm. you know, the, the swaggery guys who are the top of the pipeline are not taken over, and the people that maybe are not doing as well can, can get the help that they need and not feel intimidated. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I think uh, and I think the other thing is, uh, as you were just saying there about the authentic piece, because I think this is so, so important uh, to develop an authentic voice. And I think that people are kind of tired of inauth inauthenticity, to such a word. Well, there is now. Uh, and I think even the like the pandemic and stuff and people really want to have connections with other people and they want other people to be real and authentic and i think in sales i think that's what people want most of all now they want to trust you they want you to be authentic they want you to have to they want you to enlighten them yeah it's so true and i think part of the thing is that individuals expect work to like reparent them <laughs> you know we all come with with our baggage and our, our issues and whatnot and, and we're coming off the pandemic. And I think I think that the, that people again need to take their own agency with with their own authenticity. But I also think that as people return to work, that work doesn't throw a big like welcome back party and give a bunch of promises like it's a political speech. <laughs> and remember that change is incremental. So if we don't want things to look like they did before, it's not going to be a celebration party. Hey, everybody, we're back at work, have the CEO talk, have the C-level people talk about a bunch of things that are going to be different. It's maybe understanding what everybody wants to be different and then taking it incrementally and road mapping it like you do in technology sales, right? Yeah, yeah, no, ab absolutely. And I think that's a that's a critical point as well is uh, because you have to roadmap things up. But you also have got to involve people in the process, but you've also got to make sure you understand why you're doing it. Are you just changing for the sake of changing? Are you are you resetting because there's a good reason to reset? I mean, what's what's the what's the driver behind it? I think the motivation is very important. I agree. And the other thing that I was going to say, too, is belonging and individuality. Those are experiences. Those mm. aren't strategies. Those aren't manuals. Those aren't check off the boxes. And the only way that we can do it is to allow ourselves to be vulnerable enough to show some of our humanity. And that's what people expect. And if they don't get it, they're going to leave. Yeah, And I like what you just said there. That they want to 
you know, a little bit vulnerable, show some of your humanity. It doesn't mean you have to go to the to the fullest. And because I think sometimes nowadays when people say like, oh, you need to show a little bit of vulnerability, people think that they have to unload everything or they have to be an open book. And I'll tell you one thing coming from Ireland, that was a uh, it was a cultural it was a cultural shock when I first got to America, how open people were about everything anyway. So so I think sometimes there's a happy me. There's a happy medium there. I, yeah, there is a happy medium there. It's not about like, again, it's that I'm not into the itchy, scratchy, like I come from 80s bosses, you know, yeah. in my mind, the leaders are still like in blue suits with ties <laughs> and wearing like Gordon Gecko suspenders and women are wearing like dime sized earrings. <laughs> and so I'm not into, okay, let's all hug it out because it still has to be in the context of work. We still have a bottom line. We still mm -hmm. have stakeholders. We still have performance that needs to be done. So everything really is in the context of work. And there can't be an expectation that we can just bring our full selves to work. There still has to be context, but I think it's up to each entity to define what that context is. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, and I think that was really, that was beautifully put because yeah, I think you have to define the context and it, it has to be within, we have to remember at the end of the day that you know, we get paid to do a job and we get, and results are what counts in the end. It doesn't mean that you can't construct a really good, positive way of getting there, but right. at the end of the day, you can't lose yourself in the, in the process either. Exactly. And it can't be, again, just, just these sort of check off the box things like, okay, everybody gets a mentor, uh, but we don't care if it's an introvert with, you know, the, the, the top producer who's just like this complete extrovert who's hitting it out of the park because those, those personality types aren't going to work well. So even though you think you have these processes, you may be being a little bit more thoughtful about how they play out. And if you're going to, and if you're going to do these tests on how people learn best, are you just going to do the test or are you actually going to take those results and do something with them? So there's just a lot of talk sometimes. And, and it's really the self-awareness that will help us align to what we want to accomplish, not just talk about it or do a little test about it, if that makes sense. No, it makes complete sense. So if you were advising somebody uh, uh, to go on a journey of self-awareness, how would you tell them to start? That's such a great question. I would, I think that there's a lot of different ways to start. I think, you know, doing some, some Daniel Goleman EQ, you know, if mindfulness is your thing, I mean, I, again, I came from ultra marathoning. I wasn't about to sit on a cushion and chant. So I realized that I could do it with rock music. I realized mm -hmm. that I can train my awareness by listening to one instrument through the whole entire song, knowing if I get distracted, I can go right back to that instrument. But it is really the biggest thing is allowing yourself space, whether it's through athletics, whether it's through taking a walk, whether it's through meditation, whether it's, you know, by reading, whatever it is, just taking the time to have some space so that you are not in the past and the future and suffering along and, and being on autopilot. Yeah, no, it, that's that's great advice because, yeah, it, it, it's true that it, it seems particularly difficult, as I said earlier, for people to do this today because you've got your phones, you've got your social media, you've got all of these distractions and the idea. And I think, as I said, I think the idea of spending time with yourself and in your own head is, is it frightens a lot of people. It, it does, but it's also incremental, right? Do yeah. it for three minutes and you might and you might think it sucks and you might get distracted 8 million times. It's only three minutes. Next day, do it for three minutes again. But it doesn't have to look the same for everybody. It could be micro practices throughout the day, but presence is really, presence, whether it's individual, whether it's it's in teams, just being present is, the antidote for so much of the stuff that really is wrong with with the workplace <laughs> mm -hmm. no no i i totally agree with you i think that that whole idea of, and if there's one thing people to take away from all of this would be that presence thing i'm glad you you brought that up that is one thing that people could work on immediately 
is like in your next conversation, ask yourself, am I truly present mm -hmm. in your next meeting or whatever it is? Am I truly present? If you're on a sales call, am I truly present or right. am I wandering off or am I suddenly sneaking to look at the ESPN over there and see, oh, yeah, oh, I see they're, they're going to sign who? OK, oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, but that the whole idea of presence, I think that's so powerful and it's so underrated. Well, I have a great exercise that's really, really quick. The next time you meet somebody, ask them to show you a picture in their telephone and tell you a story and sit there and listen without interrupting. Just listen. And then when they're done, spend a few seconds telling them what you liked about what they shared. Yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a great exercise. Uh, there's something that I was I was referred to that they do in in therapy. I think they do in couples therapy and family therapy. You know, especially in couples therapy, like they have one person speak, and then the other person has to not just repeat back what they said, but actually they're not allowed to move on until the person who originally spoke actually agrees that the other person has understood what they said. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what. Isn't this isn't isn't work relationships yeah. like marriage? I mean, yeah. we spend more time at work with people that we work with. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> Well, listen, um, Shelley, this, Shelley, this has been fantastic. Uh, the book, as I said, is out. It's called Weird Girl Adventures from A to Z and uh, available on all the all the best uh, booksellers. Uh, all of Shelley's information is going to be below this video, the links to the book, all of that good stuff. So I really would encourage you to go go check it out. Uh, and before we go, Shelley, though, do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So I, again, I'm an author. I also am a speaker. I speak about weird at work. And actually it's about how we can create the experience of belonging for our talent to create inclusion. So that's what I do. I'm a speaker and I'm a writer. I also speak about mindfulness, but I use rock music to do so. So it's a little bit Excellent. of a different approach. Yep. Yeah, no, fantastic. Love us. Uh, again, listen, thanks, Shelley. Thank you all for listening and watching, and I'll see you for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.